I'm going to bloody laugh if you get the ink all over you. An old man watches over the horizon, gazing into the vast distance. Emotions course through him along with thoughts of what he might face. Before him he sees a mountain and behind him the little town he was born in. Forward or backward he will go. Either way, the path he may choose is for him to walk alone. One step towards the mountain he takes. The journey begins and takes all the time that remains. As the old man continues his journey towards the mountain, he listens to the wind's song and observes his surroundings. No sunshine rains down from the sky, no warmth is to be found up above. Under the cold, bleak sky, the old man presses on, with sadness clouding his mind. Long did he wander, eyes facing towards the ground, until he encountered another wanderer, traveling on the same lonely path. A young man holding hands with his small child like a good father does. The old man saw something in this child, in himself as well as in the young father. Who is he? asked the child from her father. The young father, with a cold expression on his face, opened his mouth and said, he is just a cranky old man, aimlessly wandering paths of shattered dreams and broken promises and looking at his past mistakes over his shoulder. Pay him no mind, my dear child. 
The young father continued his journey with his child, eyes fixed on the horizon and not looking over his shoulder. As the two walked away, a letter fell from the young father's jacket. He didn't turn around to pick it up as if it didn't exist. The old man picked up the letter to give it back, but when he stands back up, no one walks the road. The old man takes a look at the letter and is shocked. The letter is signed by him to himself. He hesitantly opens it up and finds a note that reads that what is left behind is what will be found again. The old man has said these very words before. In the deepest reaches of his mind, he remembers to have said these words to himself. From his own lips to his own ears, in front of a broken mirror, in his own broken down apartment. Life had not been fair to him, just like he had not been fair towards his own son. He turned back and returned to the town he calls home. That what is left behind is what will be found again, says the old man with humility. As the old man walks away, his eyes facing towards the ground. He was relieved to finally get rid of a load that had been clouding his mind for decades. The next day, the old man was spending his day in the comfort of his own house, browsing an old photo album, smiling as his mind was filled with warm, happy memories. He was finally at peace with himself after spending decades regretting his mistakes and wrongdoings. As he sat in his room, lit by a warm candle, a phone started ringing. The old man was surprised because it was usually him making the calls as opposite of receiving them. The old man picked up the phone and said, Anders here. Hi grandpa, how are you? A delighted voice of a small child echoed from the phone. The old man smiled as tears of joy made their way down his old cheeks. The man starts to walk on the street. Then a traffic accident happens. The man is hit by a car. He is taken to the hospital and put on a drip. The surgery doesn't take a long time. They keep checking his vitals all the time and they move him to the x-ray room. There they find out that the man's thigh bone is broken. They give him strong painkillers in the room for anesthesia. He is going to make it if only he follows instructions given to him. The man gets home with the walking sticks. He has the phone number to the hospital written in his medical papers for safety's sake. Recovery can begin. Dracula has flown to the hospital from his own mansion, which is located in Greece, in the cemetery by the ocean. After the surgery, Dracula comes to the room to collect the blood remaining from the surgery because he is thirsty. One child is operated in the theater in the evening, a severe heart surgery made by aliens. Dracula thirsty. Dracula needs something to drink, says Dracula. When Dracula drinks, he feels a lot better. He leaves the scene. At the same time, on the other side of Tokyo. Hey Kaneki, could you give me a ride to the other side of the town? Okay, jump on my back, then we fly. Tsukiyama sits on Kaneki's back. When he sits there, he wishes that Kaneki could take off from the ground as fast as possible. Tsukiyama has to hurry because the troops of CCG were chasing him. Hurry, Kaneki! Take off before they come here! Who? Kaneki asks. CCG, of course! Okay then, now we go! 
They fly away to the other side of town. A cruise to the ship. The ship sinks into the sea, releasing smoke into the air which could be seen from far, far away. A long distance away in the cabin, a horrible drama takes place. The weapons are in position. They run to the forest. In the region there is a fight. There is jealousy. What are they going to find? Will they find every stash? The girls are lost in the forest. They saw some men with a scary axe. There are strange sounds in the forest. Who's that creak? Breath of wind. The men seek the weapons. They gallop. The men come to rescue the girls and they all go away from there. with celebrities. I want to have many animals. small reef around 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 no beginning no end like a flower bud I blossom further like a leaf in autumn I fall <laughs> 